Alright, in this video, this is T's Workbook Hints video number 8, and we're going to be looking at how to approximate some square roots. These examples that I'm going to cover here are going to be helpful in the arithmetic and putting numbers in order sections in my T's Math Workbook. I just released an update yesterday, uh, version 1.6, and it includes some square root examples. For more information about my workbook, you can visit my website, www.bcraftmath.com, and then check out the store tab. So this first question here, what two integers does the square root of 65 lie in between? Okay, so we got some key words here. We're talking about the square root of 65. That's what this means written uh, with a math symbol. That's the square root symbol. And it says, what two integers? Now, if you don't know what an integer is, it's a pretty number. It's a whole number that can be positive or negative, such as negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But those numbers just keep on going in both the positive infinity direction and the negative infinity direction. Now, if we were to look at the square root of 65 on a calculator, this is not an integer. The two integers that this number lies in between that is in between 8 and 9, right? 8.06 is in between 8 and 9. 8 and 9 are our two integers. But suppose you didn't have a calculator or you had a calculator that did not have the square root symbol. Here's what I want you to think about. Here is a multiplication table for our 1 through 20s. And what I have highlighted here in this diagonal, these are our perfect squares. For example, 4 times 4 gives us this 16. 16 is a perfect square because the square root of 16 is 4. Same thing down here with 64. 8 times 8 is 64. 64 is a perfect square because the square root of 64 is 8. So let's keep that one in mind and let's look at the very next one, 81. 81 is a perfect square because the square root of 81 is 9. Keeping these two in mind, let's go back to that example. So we had the square root of 64, and then we had the square root of 81. Now these are integers. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 81 is 9. Notice 65 lies in between 64 and 81. And we just saw in the calculator that the square root of 65 was just a touch above 8. Remember that? 8.06 is a little bit bigger than 8 because 65 is a little bit bigger than 64. So therefore, the two integers that the square root of 65 lies in between is 8 and 9. Bearing that in mind, let's come down here and arrange these numbers from least to greatest. The two tricky ones here are the square root of 50 and the square root of 63. So square root of 50, let's think about that. First thing that comes to mind to me is 49. 49 is a perfect square because the square root of 49 is 7. So the square root of 49 is equal to 7. So since we're talking about the square root of 50, that's a little bit bigger than 49, right? So the square root of 50 should be a little bit bigger than 7. The square root of 50 equals something a little bit bigger than 7. So what we know right now for a fact is that the square root of 50 is going to be a little bit bigger than 7, so we know this is bigger than this. Now, 7.5, that is actually going to be bigger than the square root of 50 because the square root of 50 is just a hair above the square root of 49, and that was 7. So the square root of 50 is like maybe 7.1. It's definitely not going to be 7.5. The other tricky one here is the square root of 63. And something that comes to mind here is the square root of 64, which is equal to 8. So the square root of 63 is going to be something a little smaller than 8. Think about that. The square root of 64 is 8. Since 63 is a little bit smaller than 64, the square root of 63 is going to be something a little bit smaller than 8. Now, I don't really care about what the exact number is because all we have to do is arrange these numbers from least to greatest. So the smallest number up here uh, is definitely not 7.5 because 7 is smaller than that. And since we said the square root of 50 was something a little bigger than 7, this is the smallest number up here. Followed by something a little bit bigger than 7, the square root of 50. Again, we're going from least to greatest. 
Then we're stuck with this 7.5, this square root of 63, and this 8. 8 is the biggest because we had the square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 63, something a little smaller, maybe 7.9 or something like that. But I do know for a fact that the square root of 63 is going to be bigger than this 7.5. So 7.5 is this next smallest one, followed by the square root of 63, and then finally our 8. So we don't need a calculator here. It is helpful, however, to be familiar with some of your perfect squares. I have those highlighted here. Because now you've seen that we actually take these perfect squares that you see in blue, and we can approximate square roots in between them, just like we did with these two examples. And there you have it, video number eight of the T's Workbook Hints. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.